Hey everybody, super quick announcement before the episode starts, and it's a good episode, so get excited. Uh, we have restructured, revamped, re-whatevered our Patreon. So if you are supporting us now, or if you have been thinking about it, it's a great time to sign up. Uh, we've changed some of the levels, we've added a few tiers, so there's more options for signing up and supporting the show and, and everything we do. But the big main ones are for our $10 donors, we've moved away from, from badges which were difficult and getting lost in the mail and all these other things, uh, and instead we've replaced that so at the $10 tier there is a monthly vlog. We wanted to keep all the bonus audio still at $5, but something fresh and new for the $10 donors. So there'll be a vlog coming out every month, the first one will come out in May, where you can see behind the scenes things and we'll talk a bit more about how to and design principles and podcasting ideas and music things and all these other vlog style content and you'll be able to see our faces while we do it which is weird and novel uh, and our $20 tier now there's a sort of trivia club Danny writes a new quiz every month that you can do and put in your score and she'll grade them and it's a fun weird little trivia thing so if you want to help support the show there are new options check it out uh, there's a link in the show notes below to our Patreon otherwise go and listen to this great room and by go I mean stay because you're already listening Keep doing what you're doing and enjoy the episode. Welcome to Escape This Podcast, a show that's a mix between tabletop role playing and escape room puzzles. This is the seventh episode of season 12. 12 C. I know we need two a year, but still 12 C. I yeah, it makes I, it very easy to rack them up that it's way. It's a big number. It's Speaking silly. Speaking of, episode seven, haven't I only written like two rooms this year? That's okay. Other people write them for us now. We don't need to do anything. Uh, this is some sort of awesome pyramid scheme. But you wrote this one, so that's okay. Uh, every episode we have guests come on and play through an escape room of Danny's devising. Uh, asterisk. Asterisk. Where they have to solve puzzles and escape. And this episode we have returning guests. We have Ariel and Juliana of the Wild Optimists. Welcome back. Thank you. It's so great to be back. Thank you. We're so excited. It's so good to see you again. It's been so long. It's It's been a pandemic apart. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Far too long. Coming to see you guys was like the last thing we did before everything burned down. Yeah. We are excited to have you back on the show. I think it's the, your third time on an actual episode, and I hope I haven't forgotten one, which I do occasionally because they all blend together. But Three sounds right to me. Yeah, I think three sounds right. Yeah. Children of Mysaris, quite early on, as mm -hmm. evil nurses, or mm -hmm. one evil what? nurse stuck together. Don't make this up. I invented this. No, no, we no, no, no. We were, were definitely evil, evil nurses. That's an, they you were, were evil Ariana. Nurses. Evil nurse Ariana. You were evil? Oh, my God. We got stabbed by the nurse and we got knocked out and taken to a church. Oh, that's right. You were a character. Oh, I was a character. Oh, I got my, killed by you're them. You're right. You're right. Don't you You wrote it. Yeah. Uh, Too many seasons. <laughs> and we also had you on for, I think, our Oscars award show yeah. filmed in los angeles very appropriately Done in los angeles exactly yeah. didn't we turn out to be evil again oh no, your friend evil. did is this no, a theme right. should we like be knowing this now <laughs> I, yeah. going in no i think you had an evil friend that time who knows maybe you'll be evil this time maybe you won't i maybe guarantee you'll be the best that for this episode you are part of a group that is widely considered by every adult to be completely benevolent if not 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 just benevolent incredibly good you're for the great society. you're wonderful you're part of a very good group children hate you but adults love you exactly um so before we get started we always ask our guests the same two questions and, and for we you, need to catch up it'll be an update uh the first question is this is an escape room podcast what is your escape room experience at uh, juliana did you want to start i'm sure you have a lot it's true. Yes, it just uh, keeps growing and growing. Um, I don't know. It, it's I'll say it's slow during the pandemic. But yeah, you know, we, we've played several hundred escape rooms at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, Ariel, anything different? Any new recent escape room stories? I don't know if there's a story. I would just say that, I, you know, it's, I've been really excited by all the escape rooms recently that are really blending immersive theater. So... Nice. When you come out to LA, there's a couple <laughs> really brilliant ones here. And that's what's been most exciting about escape rooms recently. Oh, wonderful. Well, then the other element of this show is this is escape rooms mixed with a sort of tabletop role playing style. Do you have any new tabletop role playing experience? Can we go the other way around? Ariel, do you have any new or interesting tabletop role playing experience? Unlike our escape room experience, um, the pandemic was quite good for our role playing <laughs> games. True. 
Uh, so we had a game going during the pandemic on Zoom, and we've actually gotten to do a couple one-offs since then, which were really fun. I hadn't done just you know one-off games. Mm. I like a uh, good before. one-off. Yeah, well, they're one very nice. memorable. They take a lot of the stress out of it. Like mm. you'd be like, "Can we all get together again? Is there another time that this will work out?" You, you don't like, have to worry about done. story fading and fizzling. Yeah, they're good fun. Um, and uh, Juliana, is there anything different with you? Yeah, I mean, Ariel and I live so much of the same life, so <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> I'll just same say, game. you know, to that, like, played a lot more in pandemic, um, which was super fun. Wonderful. Well, I think with that, we can get started. Danny, are you ready to to run the room? All are right. you prepared? Okay, let's do this. All right, let's whisk you away. It has been a rough time trying to get through the pandemic. You've watched a lot of those close to you get sick. You've had to endure scary lockdowns where you had no idea what was waiting for you at the end. Homes and societies collapsed. There are some who still argue about where this mystery bug even came from. Uh, And to top it all off, one of the ones who got sick was the queen. And with her unfortunate passing, you found yourself without a home. You are bees, by the way. (laughs) I should probably mention that. It was really hard to find another hive that would accept you. Everyone's suspicious about everyone's health. There are language barriers involved. But find a new place you did, and you are thrilled to learn all you can about your new home, your new queen, and your new hive mates. But this morning came trouble. Some of the workers didn't come back from a nectar expedition. And these days, everyone knows what that means. The bugs. Varroa mites. So dangerous that as soon as they grab onto one bee, they can cause an entire hive to collapse. Those poor bees out there must have been attacked, and they would know that as soon as they were, even if they kept their strength, they couldn't risk returning and spreading the vile creatures to the hive. Everyone's been so careful. Where did they pick up these mites? Well, in times of trouble, everyone looks for someone to blame, and, well... You're kind of an outsider. You're the newbie. You're an easy scapegoat. The newbie? Ugh, the newbie. (laughs) Obviously, you just don't know the surrounding area well enough. It would have been easy for you to just accidentally pick up a mite and cause the entire thing to end in disaster. Oh no, you can't let this happen. You're really trying to ingratiate yourself here. Okay, okay. So you're in the unusual position of needing to clear your name and... Um, well, to do that, you might need to eliminate the Varroa mites from the area. You know, just get rid of the plague that has been killing bees all across the planets. No pressure. And, um, well, you've actually never personally had to deal with these mites before, so you have no idea how to fight them. So really, more than anything else right now, you need information. Information, a a, a really powerful weapon would be kind of good too, but information. So you consider your surroundings and all that you have at your disposal right now. Your hive is a rough circle with the entrance to the south. In the east wall is the passage that leads to the hatchery with all of the eggs and new larvae. In the north wall is the passage that leads to the queen's quarters. And in the centre... The huge mass of worker bees dancing, writhing, bumping and buzzing against each other. It's like a rave in there. As for outside the hive, you know there are several nectar and pollen sources that you can't recall off the top of your head how to get to them from here. The poor expedition that got attacked by mites must be out there somewhere too. And if worst comes to absolute worst, there is... Another hive, not far from here. You know exactly where. You know because, well, you went to them first, begging to serve them after the loss of your home. And they jeered and threw you out head over thorax. You'd rather avoid them if you could. But duty calls and, well, sometimes you don't get a choice how best to fulfill it. And that is it. You are free to move around. I thought Queen's Quarters first. Oh, I was thinking we go join the rave. <laughs> just da- like we just want a- info, so it seems like you know, just dancing with a bunch of people, a bunch of bees is a is a great way to to get that info. I hear you, but at the same time, don't they kind of hate us? 
<laughs> and shouldn't we go in with like a little bit more information? No, they're just suspicious of us. So if we like join them in their good time rave, maybe they won't be so suspicious. The other hive hates us. If we go snooping through the queen's things, I don't know if it's going to make them less suspicious of us. <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. Let's go dance. Let's go. Let's say you've started off somewhere near the entrance so you can walk straight through the rave. And if it sucks, you can just keep right on walking up to the north. <laughs> There are literally thousands of bees down here. A lot of them are just wandering, spectating. Several of them, though, are in the middle of dances. And these dances, you well know, are to communicate the locations of things that are important to the hive. Scanning around, you notice that a lot of the bees are doing one of four particular dances, which to you implies four very large, very important resources. There are some other dances going on around, but those four are the main ones. Sadly, you haven't been here long enough to quite know how to interpret their movements. They're a bit different to the way your old hive used to do it. But we've got an image for you to show roughly what you're seeing. Yes, so for people at home, you can see this image in the show notes below. There are not many images in this one. This one's That's, image yeah, light cool. compared to others. Um, and uh, uh, Juliana, would you like to describe the image to our listeners at home? It's divided into four sections with two bees in each section. The top section has a bee facing to the northwest with the little two lines, two parentheses lines beside <laughs> it that are like, it's jiggling and dancing yes. and shaking. Uh, so the bee facing northwest is doing that for 20 seconds. And then right next to it is a bee facing straight north for three seconds. Moving to the second fourth of the paper, there is a beam facing north east for 30 seconds. And then next to that bee is one facing south for five seconds. The next quadrant has a bee facing southwest for 20 seconds. And then a bee facing east for two seconds. And the final bottom quadrant has a bee facing south east for 10 seconds and south for one second nice they are very cute bees i would like they're to adorable <laughs> they have little bee then. tails <laughs> there's a lot of character in those little bees <laughs> i'm just glad that they look like bees and that the fact that they are jiggling is made clear by those lines they're perfect jiggle for lines. sure they're, they're even, the lines themselves are jiggly. It's very oh. jiggly. Fun <laughs> fact, I, so I drew the bees on my tablet, which I then transferred my computer to, to the computer to make the actual image. And then I went, oh no, these don't look right. They don't have jiggle lines. So I just had to use MS Paint oh, using a mouse, a mouse. And that's why they look so jiggly. And I was worried. And then I went, no, you know what? It kind of works. Perfect. Super jiggly. Okay. Well, I mean, this certainly seems like something to be figured out, but I don't know that I have any immediate thoughts of what it might mean. Do you, Ariel? I don't. I would vote to keep exploring. There's stuff that jumps out at me about it. I don't know that there's enough to solve. So, Queen's Quarters? Bye. Let's go. <laughs> the rave is a bust. Uh, you head further up to the north, because if anyone's going to have information, like that sounds like the Queen would be that person. B. Thing. Isn't she dead? Your old no, queen no, is dead. Our queen is dead. Oh right. Yeah. This the queen one. is dead. Long live the queen. Exactly. <laughs> you make your way to the north entrance tunnel. Oh wait, hang on. Tunnels. Uh, oh, you you didn't know this. There are actually three entrances here, not one. Uh, there's one in the north, one more to the northwest, and one more to the northeast. You stick your head inside each one and, oh boy, uh, it's, it's a maze in here. These passages interconnect, they branch, it's completely labyrinthine. Is it labyrinthine or labyrinthine? Ooh, labyrinthine. This is why you're right and not talk. Labyrinth-like. <laughs> you know the queen's chamber is somewhere through here, but you have no idea how you'd find your way. Should, should we dance through the, through the maze? I say we just go in. What? <laughs> you have to have a plan. Yeah, let's follow the left-hand wall. The hood. Just stay what? to the left. No, no, no. We should go northwest for 20 paces, north <laughs> for three paces. 
for people, sure. for people listening at home, Ariel's eyes just, <laughs> ugh, I guess, I guess you could do like a puzzle or something. <laughs> So here's what we do. We actually, I go dance through this thing and Ariel just puts her hand on the left wall and walks as far as she possibly can. <laughs> All right. So you try that and these coincide a little bit because presumably that means you're both going northwest. Juliana, you are dancing like crazy. You try to dance for 20 paces. The corridor actually doesn't go for that long. So that's a bust. Mm. And um, uh, Ariel, you try to hug the left wall. And it very quickly leads you into a circle and you end up just going into a circle for a while. No, no, but that can't happen because... <laughs> You're thinking of human mazes. These are bees. <laughs> They've got six legs. It makes a big difference. <laughs> you, find, you, you find the desiccated uh, corpse of another bee that got lost 100 years ago. Okay, and Northwest you, gets us a dead bee. Yeah. It doesn't get you a dead bee. There are... I wonder where hives normally keep their dead bees. Eat them. What do... They eat them. I didn't Google this. Somehow this didn't come up in my Googling of bees while doing this room. Do, do they bury them? Do they just throw them outside? I think Bill's right that they eat them. Oh, I'm going to know right after this. Right, what happens if we start down the middle one? Pretty much exactly the same thing. Let's just go with, without having some knowledge of where you're trying to go, these things just aren't working for you. There are too many passages. Hmm. Shall we go visit the hatchery? Sure, let's go to the hatchery. You head over into the east passage. You put the buzz of the swarm behind you. The babies get to enjoy some quiet. So they have a very long, windy tunnel leading down to them. Eventually you arrive at the chamber at the end and there are thousands of eggs attached to the walls and thousands of little larvae wiggling around in their own special honeycombs. And you get just a wave of new baby smell. And, you know, that it smells like the queen, basically. And, in fact, from one corner, you actually can see a couple of adult bees fussing over one baby in particular. Oh, my God, the queen smell coming off that baby is just big, big queen energy. It's so powerful that it's actually even dusting off a little bit on the adult bees. So you figure this one must be a future queen being given the royal treatment. But you don't see, thankfully, anything might related down here. Can we go fawn over the soon-to-be queen? You absolutely can. Oh, the smell is quite something. The other bees that are actually on duty here look at you with a great deal of suspicion for being here, though, so you back off a little bit. Long live the queen. Bye-bye. Okay, so we go back to the maze, and we try to smell our way through. You close your many, many eyes and you take in a deep whiff and uh, it's very faint. These tunnels are very winding. Uh, you couldn't smell the new baby smell from the start of their tunnel either. But weirdly, um, you do think you smell a little bit of queen smell. It's not coming from this direction, though. It's coming from behind you. Can we follow it? Is the queen the rave? <laughs> it's very difficult, but you go you go back towards the rave, and yeah, there is definitely some bit of queen smell. Nowhere near as powerful as off the queen baby, but you you sniff around, and eventually, you find one bee dancing around that has the same scent that's been imprinted on all of those eggs. Uh, you come across this one; they are dancing. They are doing different patterns to those main four that you noticed. This one, her shakes and waggles are much shorter and sharper. And to you, that means shorter directions, short like shorter paces. You, you don't really know for sure if it's the same. But yeah, they're also dancing on their own. Unmistakable queen smell. And you can see that bee dance in this next image, which Ariel will describe for all of the listeners at home. Who can see it themselves? You can see it. There's a link. But otherwise, if you're driving, don't look. Let Ariel tell you what this dance is like. Well, I would like to start by saying that I am disappointed there is no crown on this bee's head. <laughs> <laughs> They've only got a light queen smell. They're probably less likely to be a queen and more likely to have interacted with a queen. Okay, all right, gotcha. Okay. Well, um, incidentally, honeybees pick up dead or diseased nest mates and throw them out of the hive. Get out of here, you corpse! <laughs> so... Does that 
Like, why aren't there a lot of dead bees on the ground by hives? Anyway, okay, sorry. Because <laughs> all the things um, that eat bees hang out near hives. Go and just wait for it, baby. It's coming. So what we see here is five bees in a liner in different directions. And the first bee is pointing northwest and underneath it says sec uh, 10 seconds. And the second B is pointing due west, and it says four seconds. Then the middle B is pointing down four seconds. Northwest again, seven seconds. And northeast, 20 seconds. Shall we go try dancing through those tunnels again? I accept. I accept that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, what will you give me to dance through those tunnels with you? <laughs> And what kind of music are we playing, first of all? Something? Yeah. <laughs> no, come on, we've got a pun for this. What's, there's no pun for bee music? Jazz. Ja bu ba buzz. Bees like jazz, buzz. I hear. Bees do like jazz. I've this seen is, that movie. This is a bee movie joke. <sighs> is it Beely Holiday? It's oh. Beely Holiday. Bee Bee King, if we're going it's to go bee back. Bee oh, that's King. <laughs> um... All right, so you head back up. You got your three tunnels. Which one do you pick? North. West. Just like you did before. You go to the northwest. How far would you like to go? We, I think we want to go for 10 dancing seconds. <laughs> Based on your rhythms, that is about 10 normal paces. Which <laughs> you make it work for this tunnel. So you go about 10 paces. The tunnel does indeed split in a couple of different directions here. We would like to head west, please, for four paces. Absolutely. And dancing then... seconds, Juliana. <laughs> four <laughs> dancing seconds. Or, or four jiggles. I'll also accept jiggles. Four jiggles. Four wiggles. Well, hang on. i got to do some calculations here now. What's the conversion <laughs> of a wiggle to a jiggle? Oh, no. <laughs> four All jiggles right. west. You head west for four jiggle waggle dance paces. And I assume that we can probably extrapolate. Yes. All right, so you head off going, and eventually, on the air, you catch a faint hint of that royal scent once again. You hurriedly follow those last couple of directions. Oh, you take that last really long one, and finally you emerge in a great cavern. This is the Queen's Quarters. She's right in front of you. Um, and she's locked in a fierce battle with another bee. And, well, weirdly, even though she is much bigger, this other bee seems to be winning? You don't know who they are. Are they some sort of outside invader or are they a dissenter from within the hive? But oh, you know that messing with the queen is like a war crime. It is the biggest no-no that you can have. So you can't help yourself. You buzz with indignation. And it's quite loud. Loud enough that it catches this attacker bee's attention. Just for a second, they look over at you. And that is just long enough for the queen to stab them, stab them with her razor-sharp stinger. And for a queen, that doesn't actually bother them. They can stab multiple times without being armed. So that's exactly what she does. She kills this invader dead. Whew. And when she's sure she's safe, she turns to you. You still aren't completely sure how to interpret the movements and sounds of anyone around here, but her posture seems grateful. She, it's like she considers your sudden appearance something that helped her win. You were her ally in this fight. Whew, okay, that's nice. She gestures towards her dead opponent. You don't know what to make of that. She gestures again. Oh, you're pretty sure she's telling you that the body is yours to take either to dump outside the hive <laughs> or just as a trophy? Well, thanks, you guess. You're not turning down a reward from the queen. So you, you have that in your inventory now. I, I would like to study the dead bee. You give it a good look over, and as far as you can tell, besides the horrible, horrible wounds that it now has in its belly, looks completely normal. You can't find any particular identifying features about it. And no mites. No other weird mind control funguses or parasites that might have caused it to behave erratically. It was just a douchebag bee. Wow. So I guess we say thank you so much and kind of just start trying well, to get it out we're, there. We're in her good graces. Do we kind of jiggle around like, eh? 
any news on the the mites? Like, do we do we do a little pantomime dance of the info we're actually trying to get? You do your best to get through this language barrier, but the queen clearly isn't understanding. She is putting on like a happy, glowing face. You can tell, but all she seems to be doing is repeating "thank you." I really think we should get the corpse away from the queen. She probably wouldn't mind that. Can we carry the whole corpse or do we just want to take the stinger? Because then we could sting without dying. You can try. The bees are not great shape. So you give it a try, sort of pulling it apart. Uh, It's really difficult. You're not, admittedly, you suppose, you're not all that strong. But you don't think any normal bee could do this. But luckily, this is one thing that transcends language. The queen sees what you are doing. And she is the most powerful bee that you've ever seen. So she comes up and very clearly, uh, no, no, I got this. And just yanks that stinger right out and hands it to you. Sweet. We, we do the same thank you that she mm-hmm. did for us. Ah, you're <laughs> learning. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've got a powerful weapon. That's progress. Is there anything else in the chamber before we uh, decorpse it? Nothing that you think is going to be of use. And the queen seems satisfied. She's given you a trophy. She's even given you help in dismantling your trophy. So she seems like she feels she's thanked you enough. So she goes off to her own business. All right. Shall we venture outside the hive? Yeah. Although I really think we should take the corpse with us. I just, we can go take the corpse and dump it out the hive, right? Sure. Oh, Let's yeah. bring a corpse yeah, with us. Well. Why, Why not? not? All right, so dragging a suspiciously large <laughs> bee corpse through the hive. Nothing to see here. Just dragging a corpse. I don't know why they think we're suspicious. <laughs> no, no, I think we should take it into the middle of the rave. <laughs> Just dance on it. How do you, no. how do you ruin a rave? <laughs> no, because no, maybe someone knows who he is. We're trying to get him. We have a powerful weapon. We need information, right? Like, did he send... Did he send the other teams to their demise? Like, what? who is this dude? Maybe one of the other bees knows. I feel like you're making us the most sus people at this <laughs> entire <laughs> ring. Oh, you give it a try. You, you take the bee to the rave. And honestly, a lot of them do just full on dance on it. And a couple notice that it's there. It's almost like this is just business as usual. Unfortunately, sometimes bees die. No one notices anything weird about the corpse, especially since it's now missing its stinger. They figure, ah, dang, it just stung something and now it's dead. So a few of them just very automatically, they start to gather it up. They take it towards the door. They heave it out. All right. Saved us a little bit of work. (laughs) And back to dancing. (laughs) All right. Where would you like to travel? My vote is to go outside of the hive and follow each of these, like, four directions. I think that sounds like a great plan. All right. Tell me more. We fly out of the hive and we fly northwest for 20 seconds in our wiggly jiggly way. Mm -hmm. And then we fly north for three seconds. What do we find there? You go, oh, seconds doesn't feel like it's quite enough for flight. So you quickly adjust your thinking to uh, be flight paces which is a bit longer than seconds, really. But that's okay. That makes sense. So you go around. Surely there's no harm in taking a look. So you leave. You follow these directions. And hey, it seems to work. Eventually, off in the distance, you spot a blooming bed of flowers, petals shimmering in the breeze. You get a little closer. But you can't get too close. You know, you, you've you heard all the stories, Varroa mites. They can get you before you've even seen them. As soon as you're within grabbing distance, you're at risk and they're so small, you don't notice them until it's too late. So you just, you know, you can't get too close to those flowers, no matter how good they look. And annoyingly, that means that if there is anything else useful going on around here, you can't get close enough to see it just yet. I push Juliana towards the flowers and I wait to see what happens. Ah, the Varroa no. mites! <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to think all these bees are right not to trust you. <laughs> yeah, I wildly wave the stinger. <laughs> Keep the varroa mites away. Look, for completely unrelated reasons, um, Juliana Bee flies into the flowers and mysteriously perishes, but her Yay! spirit comes back 
and zooms inside Ariel B. So you are now in one body. You're just a single B. You cannot Ariana sacrifice B. any more bees. Ariana B might be bent on self destruction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ariana Grand B? That's not how she pronounces her name. No, she calls herself Grand B. Yeah. <laughs> you got it right. It's not even a pun. This is how she says her name. All right, murderer. What would you like to do now? Well, now we know there's mites there, so we should go back and follow different directions. Oh, you have no idea if there are mites there or not. It could have just been a really unfortunate accident, as happens sometimes when someone gets pushed, especially while holding a sharp stinger. Oh, no, no. Wait, wait. No, we have the stinger with us. You've still got the stinger. My spirit (laughs) brought the stinger back. It's all it could hold. Uh, Gave you quite a fright when you saw just a ghost stinger heading straight towards you. (laughs) All right, shall we go see this other hive? Well, no, I think we should go back to the entrance and we should go follow each of these four things, no? Oh, I just assumed we would see flowers that we couldn't yet get close Pretty to. Pretty but... much. You you consider going to the other places as well. It's very likely that they are also going to be flower beds since that's what bees communicate to each other about most often. And if they are, mm, yeah, you probably shouldn't go there without uh, being a little bit more armed than you are. Mm. You wanna, Half you wanna of be... us are already dead, so you know. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's already a dead bee. That's two <laughs> dead bees already. <laughs> two dead bees. We barely started. Ah, there's thousands of them. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. sure>. <laughs> <laughs> there's no need to worry about dying bees. Who would worry about dying bees in this day and age? <laughs> yeah, I guess the other hive. Let's do. Let's that. go kill some more bees at the uh, other hive. <laughs> yeah, well, you remember exactly how to get to this other hive, so it's not going to be hard. All right, you take flight, you go in that direction. It's a lovely day. You wish you didn't have to go here during it. But after a good long fly, you spot the rigid square structure of the bad hive. It's an artificial one. It's built by humans. So they think that that makes them better than you? Uh, it's very, you don't know, bee politics. <laughs> politics. Ah. Yeah, this one, this hive was built by a human. In fact, you can actually see a human just outside doing some cleaning, clearing about the area, probably sweeping up dead bees. You tentatively approach the hive entrance. There are several bees loitering around it. Most of them ignore you. One of them looks you dead in the eyes. Oh, she recognizes you. She remembers you. She gives a flick of the stinger, and you interpret that very clearly as, um, you still don't belong here. These bees actually speak a language a lot closer to your home hive, so you understand them quite well. Several bees are entering and exiting the hive without any sort of care, without any trepidation at all. You are bewildered, aren't they afraid? Do they not know about the Varroa mites? So you give a nervous sort of buzz to try to indicate the danger. And And how does that sound? Nervous buzz? (laughs) Thank you. This other bee goes, <laughs> no mites can hurt us. Our human shields us from danger. Oh, you try to give an inquisitive buzz. Which Ariel sounds like. <laughs> but at that moment, a crew of about 10 burly, gruff looking bees surrounds her and they look very territorial. Oh God, she's got lackeys. Hey, buzz, buzz, buzz. Oh God, <laughs> they, don't look, they don't look like they're messing around. Several of them are missing legs or antennae. In fact, Lots of the bees from around here are missing pieces. You don't think they've been attacked. You think they're just like fighting each other for fun. We, we have a thing to fight with, Juliana. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they look at that and they go, what the hell? You can't bring a knife here. What is this? Hey, hey we're not looking for any trouble. We're just looking for information, see? No information for you. And they turn around, they leave. They refuse to engage with you any further. Uh, we follow and go, but wait, but please? No, I can't do it. I was looking for a, a pun there. It didn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. because you want to say, please, sounds like bees. But if you just say the word bees, it's not really a pun. <laughs> uh, bees? Could you bees please, let me wasn't in? wasn't it? Please? Please? please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this head bee just again goes, uh, no, you do not belong under the protection of a human. You're not good enough. And that's it. Uh, can we go buzz over by their human and kind of show them like, hey, we're mm. down with the human. 
This is interesting. You, let's let's see what makes this human so good at protecting his bees. So you hover behind him at first. You don't know how he reacts. You don't spend that much time around humans. Ooh, what's that? There's something hanging from his waist. It's a bottle. And there's a picture on it that looks a lot like a mite with a big cross over it. Ooh, excellent. How do you get that? Well, that's soon answered when three bees fly out of the hive and they flit about together right around the human's hand. <laughs> you, you can't really understand human talk, but that's what it sounds like. <laughs> Just picture the parents in Charlie Brown. <laughs> then he gets in real close to them, takes out his bottle, aims it at them, and gives them 12 sprays from its nozzle. And then those bees fly away, swaying happily. They look happy drunk. Well, okay. If this is the protection, you want it. You almost dart right for him. But then, hold on. A stirring memory stops you. Chemicals. Y oh, okay, hold on. What do you know about human chemicals? Well, obviously, a lot of them hurt bad bugs, but they can also hurt good bugs bugs like you if there's too much of them. And even if they don't hurt, they can fog up your brain or tangle your wings and generally just not leave you at your best. So you should probably, rather than just diving in and getting doused with something, find out exactly how much you could handle rather than just taking whatever the human decides. So you consider, you try to figure out, is there any way that you could know this? As you're doing so, more groups of bees from the hive fly up to be sprayed. Oh, take a look at that. This time, four bees go up. Ugh, some of them are those angry, fighty bees. You can see out of the four of them, two of them are missing a leg. And the farmer again. And he looks down at them and he sprays them 14 times. Okay. You watch a third group show up. This time, another four bees. And this time... One of them is missing an antenna, and another one is missing both antennae, and they receive 19 sprays from the human. Huh. So the first three, it was three bees who got sprayed? Yep. Three bees. And are, none of them were fighters, so they had all their antenna? They looked, from what you can remember, intact. Three full bees. Three full bees. Okay, and then... The second group had four bees, and they were missing how much things? Two bees were each missing one leg. Okay. And then the next four bees were missing one antenna on two bees. Is that right? Uh, one bee was missing one antenna, and another bee was missing both. So three missing antennae in total. So what I'm thinking is the first three bees had... Two antenna and two legs each. So that's three times four. That gets them the 12 sprays. Well, a bee, a bee does have six legs. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I see in your little bee drawing that we have four legs, and I imagine two more are covered by the wings. Danny, you only oh, give yeah. your bees four legs. No, yeah, some of them are covered by wings. No, no. Danny, you just don't know basic bee biology. <laughs> <laughs> Those wings are very big. Oh, you would think so. Do bees have four <laughs> wings? Yes. Wow. Good on you, bees. Because, Juliana, there's parts that are missing, but there's also, like, number of bees that have things missing, right? Right. Because in the first group, no one had anything missing. In the second group, only two... We're, we're missing three appendages, but only from two bees. In the second group, we're missing two appendages from two bees, one leg each. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. And in the third group, we're missing... Three, three appendages, appendages, but only two bees mm. yeah. are missing appendages. Mm. And I don't think we recapped recently, but yeah, those and the, the number of sprays was different for each group of bees. So the three yes, bees right. got 12 sprays. The first group of four bees got 14 sprays. And the last group of four bees got 19 sprays. Yeah. So we have two groups of four bees. And the first one, two bees are each missing a leg, and that's 14. Mm -hmm. And then the second one, one bee is missing one antenna and one bee is missing both antenna and they get 19 sprays. So why did they get five more sprays even though 
they're missing more appendages, but they're not missing legs. The sort of this, but wait, let's go back to the beginning because the standard is right that it's like four sprays per bee. That's the standard for whole bees. So I mean, I kind of feel like simplest thing: we're whole bees. We should get eight <laughs> sprays. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, I <laughs> forgot you murdered me. We should get four sprays. <laughs> you have to you have to find out how many sprays changes when you're missing all of your legs and all yeah. of your antenna because you don't exist anymore. What about yeah. when you have two souls <laughs> in a single farmer, body? Will the farmer recognize that you are in fact two bees, one of which is missing every appendage? <laughs> well, you have the stinger. <laughs> <laughs> You've got an extra stinger floating around. How does the math work for that? <laughs> Just to be fair, I really regret murdering you before because this would have been the right time. We could to have run test. some tests, some yeah. play tests, Ariel. You know how important play testing is? You yeah. need, you well, need I wanted to play test on the that. flowers. It just turned out that that killed you, and now I lost my one play tester. I go into the hive and I try to recruit new play testers. <laughs> Well, luckily, bo- both hives completely hate you and are very suspicious of you. It's going to take a lot to convince someone to be your guinea bee. I know you thought that me and my companion brought all this <laughs> disease to your hive and all you've seen us do is kill another bee. But, but it's I'd okay. like to say They're that my now. companion is dead and I need a replacement. Who's willing to join me? <laughs> Wait, that doesn't work? No. They don't speak the same language. I'm sure if they did, it'd, it'd be fine. Totally selling it. All right, at a base, three bees equals 12 sprays. So that's four sprays per bee. But then four bees should equal 16. So it's like, oh, okay, they're missing two legs, so they only get 14. You get Makes minus sense. two for that. But then four bees, the, se- the third group that comes out, gets three extra. Oh, so maybe it's just minus for legs and additional for antenna. That gets us That I'm missing. Numbers. Yeah. Yeah, that gets you to the right numbers. Two missing legs is two fewer sprays and three missing antenna is three extra sprays. Can I just say, the way that I have this written in my notes sounds so much simpler than (laughs) when it gets described out loud because mine just says sprays equals legs minus antennae. Well, there you go. But yeah, it's all the same thing. So a whole bee has six legs and two antenna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it ends up with four sprays. Exactly. Yeah, that does make more sense. It sounds very simple when it's put like that, doesn't it? (laughs) Uh, right, but you seem like you have cracked this code. Unfortunately, you don't really know what it means for you because you don't know how many sprays you might want. Mm, you know how many sprays are being given, but not what is the appropriate number of sprays to protect mm. to protect you but keep you flying smoothly. Oh, because the other bees got drunk and yeah, they are, are some, not looking some at it. 12 bees. was definitely too much, but you're not sure and you, you don't know how well you'd be able to gauge what not enough is so what would leave you feeling fine but still keep mites away you don't know where that boundary Mm -hmm. is the bees in this hive definitely would know you just are positive of that they're just not willing to talk to you um what if i bring them up juliana's corpse yeah they don't seem to respond to threats you tried that (laughs) no 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 it's a gift Oh, they might want a better gift than the corpse of a bee that's covered in mites. Yeah, in, they they will automatically throw that out, and it's not covered it in mites. It might not be covered in mites. It was a tragic mites. death. It was just a tragic death. We don't know. We don't know if there are mites on that corpse. What if we went and stole some babies from the other hive? Oh my god, <laughs> Jesus! Who are you? <laughs> It's not a threat. It's a gift that I'm giving them their babies back. First, I'm going to murder my partner. Now I'm going to kidnap babies and give them to, what, human bee traffickers? What is happening? (laughs) No, I just, look, a lot of these bees seem like they're getting drunk and they have all these chemicals. So I bet their, you know, production of more bees is down. So if we go and get... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, quite the contrary. It's going great. <laughs> Bees everywhere. Based on your reaction, clearly stealing the babies. <laughs> yeah, do not, don't steal the babies. The answer is not kidnapping. <laughs> I know you always love to kidnap Be-napping. people's children. You're doing it all the time. It's a big, oh, Ariel's stealing kids again. Gee, I wonder why we always end up being suspiciously evil. Maybe Danny's just writing to type. I tried so hard to make you good guys. Juliana, what would you like to do? 
Here's what my spirit yanks your body away <laughs> from your nefarious activities. And I go and I'm like, buzz, buzz, buzz. And I like get their attention and I'm like, I can tell you where the good stuff is. And I do the little, the other four dances to show them like where those prime flower beds are Wait, to stop. ingratiate myself with them. All this four? Is, this is corporate espionage. <laughs> All four? No, no, no. I stop her spirit controlling my body <laughs> after like the first one. And it's like, go check that one out. The goods are real. If you let us, if you give us the information, we'll tell you the other places. Don't just give all, go, give That's it all true. away. I'm no. sorry. I forgot standard drug dealer tactics. So, so many of these bees are now kind of tipsy, but they survey you and go, and eh, you prove it. You, you bring stuff here and we'll be happy with that. Yeah, maybe, maybe you bring us the goods. Ugh. You do know this does seem like they are open to bribery in some form, at if least. you can find something to bribe them with. Hmm. Not in the form of children. <laughs> Not in the... Uh, other than their own children. Something, or your or children. Or your no, children. Or children. Or yeah, children from your hive. Hive's children. Did you, no, it was the other hive's children. <laughs> no but children just, are being exchanged. Just to be fair, I was on, I was on the right... Oh, in um, that case, you know. yeah, who cares? This, this, no, hive yeah. Is, this hive is clearly very anti-immigration, so I don't think that was going to work either. Yeah, they're way. a xenophobic hive. Who wants them? <sighs> what do you think they might want, Spirit of Juliana? Yeah, you can't get to the actual flowers, so it can't be that. But I mean, I don't know if don't... you've seen much else yet that they might want. Uh, yeah. Should we keep exploring? But we okay. So... Where have we not explored though? Like, yes. can, can we just fly around a bit more? And... No, there is one yeah. specific point. Oh, uh, we some exploration. What did we do? All right. So I have the. We went and saw the other nectar and pollen places. Yep. We went and oh. talked to the worker bees and even the bees standing around mm -hmm. at the rave. We went into the hatchery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did we look at the larva? Yeah, you took a good enough look at them. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that and back then... to babies? You're just saying the idea I already had just, and got shot I'm down. just saying we're going to look at them, not <laughs> steal them and traffic them. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There are only so many times that they allow you to go in and stare at the babies <laughs> before they start to be freaked out. I don't know why they think we're suspicious. We went to the Queen's quarters. You did? Mm-hmm. That's everything Did you and I, I just both blink when another end? I mean, there's. I don't have a west oh, exit. The door to the hive? We always check the door. Do we check the door to the hive, which is a hole in it, my head? But I guess there's. You gotta look at the hive hole. It is an <laughs> entrance region, yes. Juliana, I'm... did we have a search trail? Oh, uh, shocking. <laughs> shocking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You. Give up on the outside world. It's terrible out here. It's sunny and it's beautiful, but it it's sucks. It's true. I lost my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> you lost me. Oh, no. Wherever might I be? tragic accident. B. B. Uh, and you head back to your home hive. And as you come in, you examine this entryway itself. It's a good rigid structure. The honeycombs here are unusually thick and opaque. Normally around the hive, you can see right into them, but these ones around here are extra foggy. You think you can see shapes, shadowy shapes buried inside them. Unnerving. Each one of these foggy honeycombs also has a very narrow hole in the corner. Too narrow to look through, or certainly too narrow to move through. You have no idea why these have them. Not only that, there is one other thing that you notice here. Uh, right above the hive entrance, there is a set of scratchy markings, which are, they're not much, but they're very impressive for something that someone made with bee feet. And that is our final image for this These room. These are the bee feet markings. You can see them at home if you want to click on the links below, but Juliana will describe these markings to you. Okay, so it's kind of a long strip, uh, and there is at the bottom like a little semicircle almost like a the top of if a kid drew a sun and then there are arrows radiating off of it so the first arrow is going northwest the second arrow is going north the third arrow is going 
northeast. And then from that northeast arrow is an arrow pointing exactly east. And from that arrow is an arrow pointing south. And then from that arrow is an arrow pointing northeast. And then the top part of that arrow, what it's pointing to, that is very heavily circled. And Ariel, I saw it while I was doing the descriptions, you were making some very evocative gestures. I just want to stick our stinger into all these holes. <laughs> see what happens. No, now, when you, yes, when you say uh, stick your stinger in, which stinger no, no, are you referring to? I don't mean mine. To? I mean the, the one we stole from the corpse. That makes sense. You've been carrying this thing around. No one seemed to engage you in swordplay with it. So let's see if it can do something here. You take the stinger. You find the nearest one of these weird little holes in the entrance honeycombs. It's a perfect fit. And it slides all the way in until it hits some pressure at the end. You give it one final push and then it's like it pops. It deflates. And then suddenly the honeycomb begins draining. All the opaqueness disappears and the shadowy thing you couldn't quite see is now visible. You recoil because, oh my god, it's a dead wasp. Ew. Ew. Oh, you suppose that when actual outside invaders come in, the hive attacks them and then like sticks their bodies in the walls as trophies rather than throws them out, which is the honorable death that bees get. So, oh yeah, you go around, you do a couple of extra pokings and there are all sorts of things that would normally be very nasty to bees. You've got wasps, you've got not no varroa mites, you've got things like uh, assassin beetles and that sort of stuff. Um... What else is nasty to be that's not a mite? Uh, really angry. Probably lady- ladybugs. ladybugs. Ladybugs would mess they're, up they're, a bee. They're definitely carnivores. So yeah, that's the sort of thing you find when you open up these uh, the, these funny honeycombs. Now, can we actually get at them? Like if we wanted oh, yeah. to Yeah, carry... you've got a pile okay. of evil corpses. I skin one and wear it as a costume and ah. fly it back to the other hive. No, 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 wait, wait, not, not yet. That's, that's a future plan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, trying to deal with uh, arthropods and skin is a very confusing matter. <laughs> yeah, true. How do you skin a wasp? Because, Juliana, I feel like this little map we got looks like the north side of the hive, and we should follow the, um, the northeast arrows and see if that takes us to some treasure that we can steal. Sure, I'm all for that. Hmm. You memorize those markings. You head back to the Queen's Passage maze. You follow the directions closely. Northeast this time. Okay, great. Well, there was no way this was ever going to lead to the Queen. This passage is getting smaller and smaller. You can barely fit. And finally, you hook your way all around, it says, and you reach a narrow dead end. Huh. Any holes I can stick the stinger in? No, but, uh, you know, you're, you're annoyed enough uh, at this. You, you've seen so much death that you just Cost. start stabbing around anyway. And the ground right under your feet is quite soft. In fact, as you poke down with it, you find it goes all the way through. There is an air pocket underneath the ground at your feet. So you shove your way down. You pop into this air bubble. This is a secret chamber, and right in the middle, there is a great shining ball. It's sugar water. Oh, your tongue, like, comes straight out of your mouth just as a Pavlovian response. This is irresistible. Someone has buried a secret stash down here. Ooh, this is even better than babies. We steal it. (laughs) Much easier, too. You've got the, you, you shove some of it, you shove a couple of droplets into your leg pollen bags and you head back out. And my favorite bee fact is they have little pollen pockets. I do love the- that fact. Yeah. <laughs> little stuffed. I think we fly right back to that other hive with our, with our pockets brimming. You feel a renewed confidence. You know that those other bees are apparently susceptible to bribery and you have the perfect bribery equipment. So you get back there to this phony hive and you pinpoint the same gang and the same popular bee that was uh, engaging you in conversation earlier. And she looks ready to sneer something at you again, but then she clearly catches a whiff of the sugar water on you because she freezes. 
and you can just see a little bit her her tongue also starts to come out of her mouth a little bit. She knows there's sugar somewhere. So we're like again, we want to know tell us all about the this this human protection. Um uh yeah, yeah. Um um it's six six you want six of his ch- 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 things. That that'll do it. That's perfect. Uh, we always get too much here. We don't need it, but we also, you know, we're doing so well for ourselves. We don't need to like be going and collecting pollen and nectar that often. Just, oh. just to, I know, I know, my aura seems like two bees, but <laughs> is is six right for one bee, or should it be? Oh no, yes, yeah, six, six is exactly what one bee body wants. Six sprays. Doesn't matter how many bees get those six sprays. Like, they can all be in the same group. But yeah, six sprays. That's what you want. Oh. Yeah. Sh- sugar. Sugar. Give me water. Sugar. Water. Water. Away. <laughs> oh. oh, Juliana's spirit's being corrupted by my body. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, you've got information. All right, we, we go back to ravage some corpses because this is what we do. <laughs> uh, so. This is clearly the path that I'm on now that I'm in this body. It's nothing to be done. Uh, so we fly back to our hive to those, uh, what, I don't know, do we think a wasp antenna could pass as a bee antenna? I like that. Uh, yeah, Wait, I don't see, why aren't we just yeah. getting the sprays for ourselves? What are we doing here? What because we- if we go to the farmer, he's going to give us four sprays. But if you but go we, with two extra antennas. If we have two extra antenna. We get two extra sprays. Wasn't no, it? Because he's a... yeah. And no, oh right. no, it's All it's right. mi- Legs are... yeah. It's missing antenna oh, gets sprays. you extra spray. Mm. Oh, so we have to hide ah, our right. two antenna to get two more sprays. That's right. Um, I still like the idea of just. I mean, can we just cover our antenna? Oh, <laughs> yeah, like you steal little, two wasp legs and like. You could steal two wasp legs and you'd end you gra- up with the right number of You grab of a lady beetle corpse and you put it on your head. You make sure that it doesn't have any legs or antennae on it to mess with the numbers. So you are just a bee with a nice hat and sadly, I guess, no antennae anymore. Uh, a little, a little uh, ladybug skull cap. <laughs> Perfect. So you head back to the farmer. You go up to him. You have no idea if this is going to work. He looks at you. He goes, eh? Uh, and he leans in close. He's clearly counting. And then he gives you six sprays from his spray bottle. <laughs> Your bizarre plan worked. He did not question the bee with a hat too carefully. <laughs> oh, he's got a story to tell his friends. <laughs> Score. Okay, so I, I say we go hit these uh, flowers now. Yeah, you feel good now. Yeah, let's I start do with it. Um, Juliana's grave. <laughs> oh, oh! You're right. returning to the scene of the crime <laughs> to the northwest. All right, you head back there. You know the way now. You can fly in close. You feel confident. No mites. Whatever killed Juliana. Ah, oh, some of these flowers have thorns. Oh, this is embarrassing. Oh, that must have been it. Oh, that's terrible. But oh, you know what? You you do what you can. You examine everything. You you've got to let the past be the past. This stretch of flowers, it's beautiful. So many colours, perfect in every way. (sighs) There is also no sign of the lost expedition. But you you do see something on the ground. There are some drops of nectar. Uh, It's a little bit of a path. Maybe going in a southeasterly direction. You know, some bees are a bit clumsy and make a few spills when they're excited at the start of the day. The, the drops are inconsistent. You don't think you could follow them too well, but that's just roughly what's happening. So it does look like the bees have been here. All right, so they headed southeast. Well, we started out by going northwest, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We went northwest and then north. Should we do just do number four, or do you want to go down the list? Uh, let's do number four, sure. All right, so southeast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You... Head back, you go back to the hive just to get your, your bearings right. You fly southeast for a time, then you veer south and continue on for barely much longer before you reach a oh, great tangle of wildflowers. Smells phenomenal. But when you fly in close, 
You spot something. It's a mite. Oh, in spite of yourself, you flinch away and then, oh no, there's more of them behind you. The flowers here are crawling with the things. This is clearly where all the danger has come from. Good thing though, when you bump into some of the mites, they have a bit of a cringe reaction. They're not hurt, but they clearly don't like whatever you taste like. If there was ever any doubt, the spray is clearly working. Fantastic. Whew. So, all right. When you find a way to destroy the mites, this will clearly be the place to start. Um, you keep checking around. Again, a little bit of nectar on the ground. Faint, just a few drops. So, again, the expedition definitely came here. So sad you're absolutely right about what went down. But once again, you do not see the bees themselves. Which direction do the drops go this time? This time you see a little bit of a smattering and some of them look like maybe northwest, maybe some of them south, southwest. Sure. Why don't we try line number three? We go back to the hive and then we do line number three. You count your flight paces southwest this time. And then that one has a quick turn back to the east. Not a very long journey. And pretty soon you come across a line of flowering bushes. You fly in close and a sense of dread washes over you. Because even though the multicolored flowers here are pristine, the ground in front of them, there is again, a fine path of droplets barely visible, just pointing southeast to the way you've just come this time. But, oh man, surrounding these droplets, there are fragments of legs, of wings. Oh, a fight happened here. A terrible, terrible fight. Exactly the kind that you'd expect if a bee suddenly realized she had mites latch onto her and then they all went into a desperate frenzy trying to rid themselves of them. Oh, it doesn't look like it went well. You search desperately for the bees, but they must have gotten away for now, though you can't imagine they're in good condition. And then, oh, what's that? There's something else on the ground here, something that looks actually like it was intentionally left here. There are four small scraps of flower petals arranged in a square. They're just scraps, so you can't tell what flowers they came from. But in the top left, it's a deep blue-colored petal. In the top right, it's a light blue. In the bottom left, a deep green. And in the bottom right, a light green. It turns out bees do not have the best color vision. Okay. Have we seen any flowers that were these colors? It, there were lots of different colors in the flower beds that you visited, so it wouldn't surprise you. And you do a quick look around where you are right now. You do, in fact, see all four colors amongst the flowers here. Are there any that you'd like to look at in particular? Wait, let's start with, can you tell me the order again, please? So uh, the way that these petals were laid out in a grid is the top left had a dark blue, the top right had a light blue, bottom left dark green, bottom right light green. Okay, so are there any deep greens? You do see a dark green one that looks like it matches, and ooh, it's a, you, you're pretty good at recognizing your flower types. It's a fancy overseas kind. It's called the hidden flower. Okay. None of the others seem like an exact match? No, not quite. And um, you want to head to the one place we haven't been yet? There is one place that you haven't been yet, so it feels good just sure. to have seen everything. All right, so with this in mind, your heart heavy, you head over to the northeast flower bed, and at last you arrive. Oh, it's a fabulous garden like they all are. This one's curated by humans. In fact, like you can see lawn gnomes and the fake flamingos, all of those sorts of things, a bird bath in one quarter. Oh, the flowers. Mm. You look down on the human curated stuff sometimes, but oh, they know how to get a good flower. All sizes and colors bursting with pollen like they haven't been touched in days. Uh, you don't see any signs of nectar on the ground or anything. You do not see the bees. Do any of them match our petals? Which petal would you like in particular? The light blue. All right, light blue, light blue, you hover away from the flamingos. They scare you a little bit. Uh, oh, yep, right there. There is a single plant climbing up one of the walls, uh, a dwarf honeysuckle. That's nice. So I say we go back to the other two and look for our matches. Sure. Okay, so do we want to go to the northwest garden and look for the deep blue? Cool. You rush back over to the northwest. 
Search for anything that matches that deep blue. All of these flower beds do have quite a variety of colors in them, but you keep a lookout for that one in particular. And there is a single plant that you believe matches, and it is a bearded iris. Bearded. I feel like we're having a hidden bearded dwarf thing going on here, but okay. Oh, again? So now we're going to go to the garden that um, maybe, who knows? <laughs> Might have the light green flower, but it's the <laughs> one that we get to by Who going south uh, east from the one that's the, crawling. Uh, hive. Yeah, that's exactly the wording that I have here. With some trepidation, you head back, even though it's creeping, crawling with mites that are hoping to get you. They won't, but still. Ugh. All right, light green, light green. Oh, good. You don't even need to get too deep into it. Right at the front, there are a few flowers there that match. Haven't seen many of this one before, but you're just that good. This is a false sunflower. Okay, so we have a bearded iris, a dwarf honeysuckle, a false sunflower, and a hidden flower. Bearded, dwarf, hidden, false. Hmm. I do like bearded, dwarf, hidden. Oh, well, can we go to back to the human garden? Mm -hmm. And they have those little garden gnomes. Can we like really examine those beards and see if any, or uh, examine the dwarf in general? No, no, keep going. Them... Tell me very specifically. Yeah, Juliana, you, you like stopped yourself halfway through. Keep saying what you were going to say for, in full. Oh, so I want to go examine the dwarves' beards and see if any of them have small Santa Claus false beards with something <laughs> hidden underneath. Yeah, you've got bearded, dwarf, false, hidden. It does sound pretty lawn gnome so you hurry back there, you look at these, to you, hulking ceramic figures, and you go one by one, and one of them does indeed have a beard that is like, eh, just a little bit diagonal, and from what you have seen of humans, that's not meant to be the case. It doesn't look like that beard is supposed to be sitting there like that. So you head on up to it, and sure enough, under the little skewed bit, there is a small hole. You push your way through there, and inside this shadowy hollow of gnome head, you spot six familiar bees. Oh... They are not in good shape. Yeah, as you suspected, torn wings, missing legs, at least three Varroa mites on each of them. You zoom in, but it's clear there is not going to be anything that you can do to help. They are all lying perfectly still. Oh no, what are you going to do? You take a moment to think. And as you do, the one closest to you reaches out with one leg, and like, grabs onto yours. And then they buzz weakly, and you can actually tell what she's saying. You, you aren't affected by the mites? And, oh, wow, this one actually speaks your language. Was she also a refugee from your old hive, and you just never knew that you had a friend in the hive the whole time? Oh, no, you, you flick your wings in confirmation, and she looks hopeful. Then we must tell you. We were defeated, but we learned their secret. We learned their weakness. That's the powder. Her leg slips off yours. Powder of an assassin. And then she goes limp, and you're alone. We threw that corpse away. <laughs> we could grind up the stinger. That's true. We could just go look outside the hive. It's probably still on the ground. You look outside the hive. The bee corpse, or what's left of it, is indeed still there, but it's just a bee powder. It, there is nothing really powdery about a bee corpse. And you certainly wouldn't have the first idea about how to grind up a corpse into powder. Oh no, is it possible that it means something else? Can we check his leg pouches? There were no leg pouches on this one. Powder of an assassin. And so this assassin corpse has no powdery things on it. No, nothing like that at all. And then you go, well, wait, how would this expedition even know that this bee tried to assassinate the queen? Oh, no. Point. 
This assassin is a red herring. Okay, what is it? Powder of an... I mean, I'd, I, I'd say we head back to the hive while Juliana's thinking about it. Yeah, great, you head back into the cave. I become the dominant the personality hive. and I go back to the hive. You head back to the <laughs> hive, you wade through all the corpses that you've unleashed at the entrance. Uh, beyond that, everything looks pretty normal. Some of the oh. bees are, in fact, putting, cor- putting those uh, corpses back in. So right. I go back to the corpses that we just waded through and I find the assassin beetle and I see if there's anything powdery on that assassin beetle. You see that a bee is just getting ready to stash that assassin beetle corpse back in a honeycomb and you go, no! And again, that's just one of those things that transcends all language. They know exactly what was going on. They freeze. You snatch the beetle away from them and its wings are covered in gross powder. Ugh, it's nasty stuff. Ugh. You, you scrape the wings and a mountain of powder peels off. So you take out some of the sugar water that you still have left in your pollen bags, you drink it for good luck, and you replace it with some of this powder. And then you do the same thing with your other leg. Okay. You, you have been sprayed with protection from varroa mites, and you've just been told that their weakness is this powder. What do you do? I fly over to the wildflowers that are covered in mites and I wiggle and jiggle so enthusiastically that the powder rains down upon them all. Oh, first I I coat the opening of our hive with powder to make sure that they can't get in. And then I go do that. Crafty. Okay, you go around the entrance, you paint the edges. The other bees are looking at you completely baffled. You are just putting pieces of enemy around the entrance. And then you just all of a sudden with huge confidence and determination fly off. Guys, guys, I know you don't trust me, but if you want to see something crazy, follow me. (laughs) They still don't really know what you're saying, but even the ones who are most suspicious of you, especially the ones who are most suspicious of you, they've had it. They are following you. They come right with you and you lead them to the southeast Right in the flowers, they see the Varroa mites. Oh my god, their suspicion quadruples. Any curiosity they might have had turns to terror. You have led them right to the worst enemy of them all. But you surge forward right up to the ugly, disgusting mites with their blood-soaked fangs. And as soon as you're within rage, you jiggle, you barrel roll, you fling the powder all over them. And they shriek. Little deathly mite shrieks. Let's add to the pile of corpses. <laughs> they wriggle in pain. They're contorted until they fall clean off the leaves. And your fellow bees just hover in astonishment. The mites didn't even touch you, and now they're all dead. My God, you must be some sort of bee witch. But you know what? <laughs> of all things... Bees are not superstitious. They are really happy to have a bee witch on their side. So, in their joy, these flowers are now safe. They rush for them. Ah, who knows how long it's been since someone was able to get here safely without being a danger to the hive. They burrow in. They get all the pollen and nectar they can handle. They bring it back to the hive in victory. Ah, And all of the bees, as they come back in, just to be absolutely safe, they do a quick roll around the entrance where that powder is. (laughs) They encourage all the other bees to do the same. So if any loose mites got in, like the one from the bees who had been dancing to go into this direction, especially, oh, any loose tiny mites that no one had noticed, they are all dead beyond dead. And you join in the incredibly happy victory dances this time. You have finally proven yourself to your people. And when you share your trick, share your new expertise, no bees anywhere in the entire world will ever fear this terrible plague ever again. You've saved the bees. You've saved the planet. Huzzah! (laughs) 